Hi, I'm Drew my video. Today I'm going to be talking about reptile midwives. This right here is a underweight ball python. This right here is a severely underweight blue tongue skink. This right here is what I believe to be a Burmese python with burns on its back, which is caused by a heat lamp kept too close to the basking spot. This is very common, I see it all the time. This here is a ball python that was kept in an enclosure without the proper humidity, causing it to have stuck shed and a stuck eye cat, which can lead to blindness in the snake later on. Reptiles are often neglected because people don't do their research before buying one. They just go to the pet store and they say, Ooh, look at that adorable little hermit tortoise. I want that one. How, what do I need? And that's just not good. You should have the enclosure set up. You should have all the space you need for it before you buy your reptile. And this right here is a severely, severely, severely neglected and abused hermit tortoise, or what I believe to be a hermit tortoise. This right here is a healthy hermit tortoise, as you can tell. Not neglected, not abused, he's healthy. Oh, he's healthy. Okay. And he's good, he's good. Yeah, we've been holding for a while, he's starting to kind of spat out. And, yeah, that's about all about him. Reptiles and amphibians. <laughs> Very commonly kept in improperly sized enclosures with improper conditions and an improper diet. Uh, yeah. For example, right here. This is a dark oak. Wait, yeah, wait. Alright, this is a crested gecko with metabolic bone disease, or MBD, as it is often known, short abbreviation. This is very easily avoidable. All you need is the proper diet. So a lot of people forget, these guys, yeah, these guys too, they need calcium in their diet. Did you just pee on me? Ew. Okay, uh, they, um, need a proper diet. And, um, okay, let me. And they need the proper diet so they don't have this. Without the proper calcium, their bones get weak and in the shape. Some reptiles, such, you know, hermit tortoise, they need it. They need the UVB lighting, or else they'll get metabolic bone disease. And with tortoises, their outer shells are connected to their inner spot, or their inner uh, skeletal structure. And if what happens to metabolic bone disease, you get severe pyramiding, where it goes up and is misshapen. This causes the tortoise or turtle severe issues. Jeez, chill, bro, chill. Okay, okay, hold you all the time. And, yeah, he's healthy, he doesn't have much pyramid. He does go. Metabolic bone disease is terrible to have in turtles and tortoises, especially due to the fact that it causes them mobility issues. These guys aren't the most agile, as you can see. I were to let them walk, oh god! Uh, oh god! Uh, what are you doing? Alright, so sorry about that. Um, we had technical difficulties with the tortoise. He's currently away in his enclosure. He's fine. He's happy. He just pooped. Okay, and as I was going on, I don't really remember exactly where I left off, but metabolic bone disease is terrible to have in any reptile, especially turtles and tortoises. I guess I could say turtles, because tortoises are technically a type of turtle, but it doesn't matter. Now there is a ridiculous amount of people who do not do any research before giving a reptile. They just da -da 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 -da. oh hey, that old bino king snake you have on on display looks really cool. What do I need for that? And with albino animals, you really don't want a heat lamp because their skin and eyes are sensitive due to the lack of melanin in their skin. So you really don't want to use a heat mat. You know, just just if you ever buy one. Just keep that in mind. So, based on my own personal observations, most people who shop at Petco and PetSmart don't do their research by themselves. They just, you know, they just go in and they say, hey, that, uh, let's say, that Green Day Gecko looks pretty cool. What do I need for that? That's... They, sh they cats all right, but they'll buy the reptile on the same day. You should have... Go. All right.
Alright, you see, okay, that Green Day Gecko looks cool. I want that. No, they buy the kit for the same. They buy the, like, animal. Same day, they buy all of their supplies. Which is not something you should do. You should already have the enclosure set up. That way, you can just put your reptile in there. And they can just chill out. Get used to their new surroundings. And then you can start hand taming them. That way, they're not aggressive. Very easy. Now, reptiles are sadly not the only exotic for animals that get neglected. <sighs> Amphibians, which I no longer have sadly. Birds, I have never owned. And fish, like these little guys. Got some zebra danios, the bed of fish with the costumes down. And they're often neglected, especially the bed of fish. They're often kept in one gallon tanks, which is no fish should be kept in close to that small. It's just, just terrible. I mean, they're, they're small fish. They should be given at least a five gallon aquarium. You could make an argument for two, two and a half gallon though. So it's a bit of debate on there. I mean, I have mine in a 15 gallon community tank and they are often super aggressive. It really just depends on the fish. Whatever you find works for your fish, you should do. Now these things do not live just a couple months, they live up to five years in captivity. So, if it dies in a few months, don't just get another one, you know you're doing something wrong. Now, there are quite, there are so many solutions to exotic animal neglect. We need to stop buying small animals just because we think they're cute. We need to do research before buying an exotic pet, and we need to make a commitment to our pets. Now, what I mean by that is, a lot of people will buy a snake. And snakes only eat, the average species, most species of snakes only eat about once a week. Now some, like articulated pythons, can may only eat like once a month. But they eat, they're so simple, it's easy to forget about feeding them. Which is very bad because reptiles, they grow constantly. They never stop growing. As adults, they slow down, but they never completely stop. They really need nutrients. Especially if you're a breeder. You really want to make sure that your females, especially after laying eggs, are getting all the calcium and nutrients they need. And like right here, we have a green iguana. A very healthy green iguana in captivity, which is sadly not something you see very often. Green iguanas are beautiful animals. They have, you know, just regular green iguanas, like this one here. They have orange, I don't know the exact name. They have orange green iguanas. Green, green iguanas. It's not kind of weird. Green iguanas name of the species, but they're orange, so it's kind of weird. And they even have aqua blue green iguanas. I don't know if that's the actual name for it, because I just saw it Petco and, you know, Petco, they'll just say any more so fancy. Like, I don't know, say you have a shrimp or albino, like a gecko, they'll just say that's a fancy like a gecko. So I don't know if that's the correct name for the aqua blue green iguana, but they do look absolutely stunning. If you can provide a good home for one, get one. So it's stopping you. See this one, just from looking at that picture, you can kind of tell that it's in a very good sized enclosure. Has enough things to climb on, enrichment opportunities. It's very healthy, you can tell. It doesn't have any metabolic bone disease, it doesn't have rubber jaw, so its jaw isn't misshapen. And, you know, just overall healthy animal. You can tell it's getting its UVB lighting. I can't really see if it has a roof or not. I can't tell if it's an outdoor enclosure or indoor enclosure. But it's healthy. It's getting proper lighting, proper diet, which would be veggies, maybe a bit of, like, dubia roaches, maybe, maybe some crickets. And they're just doing good. And again, sadly, that's not the case for all iguanas. Go. Alright, so these guys are often neglected. So don't just buy one, because these things do get about three to five feet long, I believe. I don't know a lot about iguanas, so don't quote me on that. And that's really all I have to talk about today, so um, bye. Maybe I'll talk again.